Hello and welcome to Cardiovascular System uh, Lesson 3 or Focus Area 3. If we have a quick look at the big picture where we've been so far then. So far we've had a look at structure and function very quickly. We looked at the cardiac cycle, uh, diastole, systole. We then had a look at how the conduction system, that electrical impulse uh, generated by the SA node, um, actually controls the cardiac cycle. So we've had a look at that four-part impulse and how uh, the two systoles uh, find their place within the conduction system. So that's where we looked at for the first part. We've also had a look at um, heart rate, uh, stroke volume, cardiac output graphs, or we will do, um, and how they change as a result of exercise. We looked at some resting values uh, for each of these, and then we had a look at how they change during uh, submaximal and maximal exercise. And the final part um, of this section on the heart is looking at the regulation of heart rate during physical activity. Okay, so what we're looking at now is, as we looked at when we looked at the conduction system, we know the heart is myogenic, it creates its own heartbeat via an electrical impulse stimulated or generated by the SA node um, down to the AV node, bundle of Hispokinji fibers. We know that we generate our own heart rate. However, when we start exercising, we have to change our heart rate. We have to increase it. It has to go faster. And this actually uses the brain. And what we can have a look at today is specifically how we regulate heart rate using three specific factors. So we're going to look at this. Three separate things you could get in the exam are based around the neural mechanisms or factors that control heart rate, the hormonal factors that control heart rate, and finally, the intrinsic factors that control heart rate. Okay, so that's what the specification is asking. Uh, what we're going to do now is have a look then. We'll start off with neural factors um, and see how these neural factors, and you might kind of stray, say from here, you might just kind of understand like neural uh, we're talking about the brain so let's have a look then from here neural factors there what do they refer to as soon as you hear a question on neural control or neural factors that regulate heart rate during exercise when you see neural you know and you have to use this three times throughout the uh, a level pe course well, as soon as you see that you have to remember that neural control or neural factors when you hear the word neural, it's referring to receptors basically there are three sensory receptors that detect information when we start exercising so as you can imagine when you start exercising um, <laughs> There's three sensory receptors and they send information um, to our brain. So the brain will be too loose a term to use. So when we have these receptors to detect changes, whether that be movement, whether it be like acid or carbon dioxide levels in the blood, or whether it be blood pressure, when these changes take place, information is sent from these receptors to the cardiac control center. Now at the moment, I wouldn't uh, draw too much. I'll probably listen for the, for the next uh, minute or two. So the cardiac control center then is located in the medulla oblongata in the brain. So I put up here, it, it's, it's this little bit here. So when we take part in exercise, um, we, we need to send information to this part of our brain in order to increase or decrease our heart rate. Now, as we're talking about exercise at this point, it will be to increase our heart rate. So let's have a look at the process by which that takes place then. So as soon as you see in your all, in an exam question, neural regulation of heart rate, explain how neural mechanisms uh, control heart rate during exercise. Whenever you see that word neural, you know you've got to talk about receptors. Now what we need to do is have an understanding of the three different uh, receptors and what they detect before they send this information to the cardiac control center. So first set of receptors are the chemoreceptors. Okay, so chemoreceptors um, detect an increase in carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen. Okay, and these are located in the muscles, in the arteries. Um, you don't have to know that, but they detect an increase in carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen. Now that will make sense. When you start to exercise, um, you have an increase in the level of carbon dioxide, but your oxygen is used up, so there's a decrease in it. Okay, now the next piece, uh, the next receptor is called the beta receptor, okay, or the beta receptors, okay, and these are, uh, or beta, their responsibility is to detect an increase in blood pressure, okay, so they detect an increase in blood pressure. Now, going on from there, the final one we're looking at is the proprio receptors. Now, the proprio receptors are located in our kind of our joint spindles or, the, or our muscles, and they detect an increase in muscle movement. So as you can think now, just take yourself away from the theory for a second. You start running, okay? As soon as you start running, chemoreceptors detect an increase in carbon dioxide, decrease in oxygen. Beta receptors detect an increase in blood pressure, okay? An increase in the resistance to flow through the arteries. 
then we have proprioceptors in our muscle spindles in our joints that um, detect an increase in muscle movement because we've started running all of this information is then sent to our brain but obviously as i said before that's too loose so it's sent to uh, the cardiac control center so one two three receptor detect the information the sensory receptors detect information and send it to the cardiac control center which is located in the medulla oblongata here in our brain now this is controlled by something called the autonomic nervous system which automatically kind of generates our heart rate um, so what happens here then when we get to this point when the cardiac control center receives this information what happens is it has to go through a number of kind of well firstly through a nervous system and then via a nerve before we can actually increase heart rate. So if we have a look at that then to start off, when the cardiac control center receives this information during exercise, it then stimulates, every time there's an arrow coming from now on, it refers to stimulus, it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. And if you wanna make some notes off this, the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for increasing heart rate. It speeds heart rate up, okay, during exercise. So in order to do that, the nervous system can't do that on its own, it will stimulate a nerve in order to do this. So the nerve that it stimulates is called the accelerator nerve. And the accelerator nerve, in turn, stimulates the pacemaker of the heart, which you will be aware of from the conduction system. So from here, this information goes to the sinoatrial node or the SA node, and its responsibility is to increase heart rate. Now, what we know from the conduction system is it goes through a number of processes, but all you have to know now at this point in this question and this part of the specification is that the SA node would lead to an increase in heart rate. Now, if that's during exercise, um, that's your first section. Uh, I might just give you a couple of things just to kind of circle here if you want to. When you're trying to remember the chemoreceptors and what they detect, it begins with a C. Okay, C for chemo. You might put it here, circle your C, because chemo receptors detect an increase in carbon dioxide. Beta receptors, okay, begins with a B, and they detect an increase in B blood pressure. So blood pressure there. Proprioceptors, uh, these are just to kind of, uh, because they're located in the joints of the muscles, they detect an increase in the movement when we start to run or exercise or anything like that. There's not a direct memory method for those. All of that, cardiac control center, nervous system responsible for increasing heart rate it's called the sympathetic nervous system and in order to actually do that accelerator nerve it then stimulates the SA node to increase heart rate now I'm just going to give you a quick uh, kind of section here very quickly if this is what happens when you're running if you imagine a hundred meter sprint for example all this information has been detected and sent to our cardiac control center it goes through the process we said here when you stop exercising, for example, you finished 100 meters and you stop, you come to a stop. As soon as you stop, okay, what happens is will be termed recovery, as we looked at on the heart rate graphs. When you get to recovery, the same things happen, okay? So we'll have a look at this, but it, it, the difference will be that the receptors detect different information. So we'll have a look at that in tomorrow's lesson. I have put it on here, but I'm going to move on from that now. All you need at the moment is during exercise, okay? Um, and we'll have a look at kind of what happens during recovery in lesson tomorrow. Okay. So let's move on then to the regulation of heart rate using something called hormonal control. Now, if I said to you hormonal... There's one key hormone that we have to know with regard to PE or certainly with regard to the cardiovascular system. And the key hormone we're really, really interested in is, and I'm hoping now this will bring back some information from a previous lesson which looked at uh, this idea of an anticipatory rise. Okay, So the hormone we're interested in, in terms of regulating heart rate, is adrenaline. Okay, so adrenaline is the key hormone. So when you see an exam question that just says describe the hormonal control of heart rate during exercise or hormonal regulation, you're looking at that hormone, you're translating it into adrenaline. Now adrenaline is secreted from the adrenal gland. Okay, and when this happens, it goes through a very simple process. It's key because as we looked at, adrenaline will always increase your heart rate. Now what we have to remember here is that when uh, the adrenaline increases heart rate, it goes via the sympathetic nervous system. System. So the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. You would also get a mark for saying which is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Uh, but I've just put one on here for now. The sympathetic nervous system then stimulates the SA node, which will increase heart rate. Okay, nice easy one that one. You're looking at a two, three mark question max for that. Hormonal, translate to adrenaline. 
where's it secreted from, uh, where does it stimulate, or sorry, what nervous system does it kind of stimulate, and then what does it stimulate. We always finish with this because SA node is the pacemaker of the heart and it is, has the sole responsibility for firing a heart rate, okay? So that's that done. Now, let's have a look at the, the slightly more complicated one. So the final one we need to have a look at is something called intrinsic control. Now, intrinsic control consists of two key components, and they are absolutely vital with regard to stimulating the SA node to increase heart rate. So let's have a look at them. So intrinsic control basically refers to increasing two key components, and those two key components are temperature, in the first instance. So let's have a look at temperature first. So what temperature does, if we have an increased temperature during exercise, that would make sense, our, kind of, our muscles increase in temperature, our blood increases in temperature. Okay, and what this means is it increases the speed of nerve transmission into the SA node. Now, because of that, that will lead to an increase in heart rate. Now, I think most people would see that as okay. So intrinsic control, equals an increased temperature. Temperature increase will lead to an increased speed of the transmission of the nerve, okay, which means it gets to the SA node quicker, which will lead to an increase in heart rate. Okay, the second component of intrinsic control actually refers to something called venous return. Now, venous return is basically the return of deoxygenated blood to our heart. So if I show you down to here, if you have a look at it, what it's saying then, the way that we can regulate heart rate via intrinsic control is by venous return. So when we exercise, there is an increased venous return. And venous return is actually this bit here. It's the blood going back from our body when we use it back to the right atrium here. So we know that from when we've looked at um, kind of a pathway of blood, that structure and function stuff we looked at at the very first screencast on the cardiovascular system. But ultimately, there is an increase in venous return. So more blood goes back to the right atrium. Now, as we know, I'll put that onto there, so more blood returns to the right atrium. As we know from our information from when we looked at the uh, conduction system, we know that in the right atrium, if you look at it up here, okay, and it comes into this top bit here, the blood comes in here, we know that the SA node is located in that right atrium. So because there is more blood going back to the right atrium, what happens is there's so much blood in there, right? it increases the pressure. And what happens, this will then increase the firing rate or stimulation of the SA node. So when it does that, this means that, that there, you can add this in here now if you want, there is an increase in heart rate. This increase in heart rate, as we know from the conduction system and the cardiac cycle, means that blood is forced down into the ventricles. Now, if it makes it easier, I don't want you to get confused here, the blood is forced down into the ventricles. We know that that means the blood being forced from the atria to the ventricles is called atriosystole. If that makes it easy, if you can write it, but you don't have to. Okay, so that means if there's more blood forced down into the ventricles, if you can imagine this now, you've had it here, it's stimulated the SA node, and because of that blood, is being forced down into the ventricles. Now, because so much more blood has come back via venous return and it goes into here, what happens is when the blood comes down into the ventricles, it increases ventricle stretch because the walls stretch back like this. And because the walls stretch back, if you imagine an elastic band, when the walls stretch back, because they stretch, they then increase the contraction force. And because the contraction force increases, this will then increase stroke volume and cardiac output, which is the volume of blood ejected from the heart in one beat and in one minute, okay? And those things happen as a result of venous return. So increase amount of blood back to the right atrium, that's venous return, so there's an increased venous return. That increases the firing rate of the SA node. This causes blood to be forced down to the ventricles via atria systole, and then, this means that there is an increased ventricle stretch and an increased ventricle contraction force, which as a result of that, if the ventricles contract and eject more blood per beat, and they do it per minute, this will lead to an increased stroke volume and cardiac output. And that's the final thing I need you to make um, a note on uh, to start tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Make sure you make good notes on these. Uh, I'm aware it's not the most simple concept, but ultimately uh, we're considering this. We regulate our heart rate three ways when we exercise. Firstly, you had neural control. 
Secondly, hormonal control. Thirdly, we have intrinsic control. They are the three headings for your notes. Make sure you've got good questions for those, please. Thank you.